Welcome everyone to Invest in Your Future with DWS Group. Good afternoon if you are joining us from Europe. Uh, good morning if you are in the United States. Um, and hello if you are anywhere else in the world or if you're watching this back on a recording. So just to introduce myself first, my name is Katie Black. I work for a company called Group GTI, which you might know through the Target Jobs and Target Connect networks. Um, and I'm absolutely delighted to be holding this session today in partnership with DWS Group, who currently have a variety of fantastic internship and graduate opportunities uh, on offer, which we're going to talk to you a little bit more about throughout the session. So we hope at the end of this session that you're going to be more informed about DWS Group as a business, uh, about the career opportunities that they offer, about the world of asset management um, and how you can pursue your, your career in, in this fantastic sector. Before I get started um, with a short presentation, um, I'm just going to allow everybody else who you can see on screen to introduce themselves. Um, so panel, if I can ask you to just give a brief introduction of kind of who you are, what your name is and what you do at uh, DWS, that would be fantastic. Um, I'm going to go round in a bit of a clockwise motion and Katerina, you are first on my screen. So if you wouldn't mind going first, that would be fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Katie. And uh, hi, from my side, um, my name is Katerina and I joined DWS as a graduate trainee this summer. Um, I'm actually in the alternative investment department of DWS. And before I came here, I studied um, industrial engineering and management in the bachelor and master's uh, degree at uh, the Technical University of Darmstadt. Um, yeah, during my studies, I have specialized um, in real estate. And so my first contact with DWS real estate was also during my internship um, last year. And uh, in my private life, I like doing sports and cook with friends. So thank you. And um, I will hand over to Oliver. Perfect. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, I'm Oli, I work with Katie uh, at GTI. Um, I'll be uh, probably not saying a great deal in the uh, presentation, I'll leave that to the uh, the, the panel, um, but I'll be monitoring the, the chat function. So um, if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask the panel, there is a, a Q&A section at the end, um, so feel free to drop them uh, in the chat as the, the message states and we'll um, ask a few of them to the panel at the end. But uh, yeah, nice to uh, nice to be here. Thanks, Ali. Should we go down to Christoph? So, hi, my name is Christoph. I'm also a graduate at DWS in the client coverage division. And I'm going to be happy to answer Katie's as well as your questions later on. Thanks, Christoph. Rocco, seeing as though you're right next to Christoph in the office. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you, Katie, for the great introduction. Uh, my name is Rocco. I'm also one of the graduates this year at DWS. I'm part of the investment division. And uh, prior to working here, I also did an internship at this company. I think it was 2018. And I studied math in my undergraduate and quantitative finance in my graduate. And now I'm here and happy to answer any questions with the other guys. Great. Thank you, Rocco. And finally, last but not least, Leonie. Hi there, my name is Leonie and I'm thrilled to welcome you to the webinar. Um, I'm heading up the TA function for DWS in Europe and I'm heading up the early careers function. So I'm the HR part of this group. So I'm more than happy to answer every question was around the process, the program itself or the culture of DWS. Perfect. Thank you, Leonie. Okay, so we're going to get started um, with a bit of an overview from me um, about uh, DWS and the roles and opportunities they currently have available, as well as the application process. So we're hoping from what you will take from this is a few kind of tips um, if you're interested in putting together an application, whether it's now or, or in the future. Um, and then kind of once I've done that, we'll move to um, the session with, with the panel um, and we can, we can ask them your questions. Um, so if I can please get up the first slide, Connor, that would be fantastic. Perfect. Okay, so, hang on, let me just 
move to the next slide. Perfect. So I've gone through the introduction and the agenda of what we're going to cover today. Um, so just a little bit about DWS and who DWS are. So um, you are probably here today because you are interested in the world of asset management. So DWS is a world class, world renowned asset manager. Um, they have over 833 billion euros of assets um, in management um, as of this summer. And DWS is very much all about innovating and shaping and making a real impact in the future of investing. They have over 4,000 employees in offices across the world. So they are a very global company um, and I very much have a very local ethos while collaborating collaborating as, as one big kind of global team um, and as I said they're all about investment for the future and really they are very entrusted to build the very best foundation for their clients future. Um, all of the information, more information about who DWS are um, and where their offices are across the world you can find um, on their website which is dws.com and so what is asset management? So asset management um, is all about managing investments on behalf of others, on behalf of clients. Um, and the aim of that is to view different clients' portfolios and manage and mitigate uh, that risk. It's a service that tends to cater for very high net worth individuals, uh, government entities, corporations, and different financial intermediaries as well. Um, asset management is not to be confused with investment banking. I think it's something that is commonly um, commonly confused with with investment banking, but it's but it's not. It's quite different. Um, so investment bankers tend to sell financial products, whereas asset managers buy them and then manage them on behalf of their clients and with a view to building and, and maintaining those investment portfolios over time. So what kind of early career programs do DWS offer? So at the moment, DWS have a fantastic number of roles um, in the US, in New York, um, and uh, in Frankfurt in Germany. So we've got a summer internship program that is kind of currently being advertised that will run next summer for 10 weeks, typically between June and August. Um, and this tends to be for students who are between their second and final year of university. As you've heard from the, the panelists, Katerina and Rocco, by doing an internship at DWS um, in the summer, you are often offered an opportunity to then apply for their graduate program um, so that's a that's obviously a fantastic offering and a, and a great opportunity and the internship itself will offer a rotational element so you'll get to spend lots of time in different departments and divisions across DWS and um, which gives you a fantastic insight into all the different workings of the business and um, asset management itself um, and of course, um, the internships and the graduate programmes are fully paid um, and the salaries are very, very good and very competitive as well. So then we move on to the graduate programme. So the graduate programme is offered um, at the moment in New York and in Frankfurt. It starts in September each year. So the roles available at the moment will start next September 2023. Um, and these include the four typical divisions, traditional asset uh, management, alternative investments, product and client coverage, which we'll hear a little bit more about what each of those are from the panel later on. You'll do an initial training of two weeks um, and then rotate around the business. Plenty of opportunity for learning, development, learning from colleagues, uh, buddies, mentors, um, and obviously lots of skill development along the way as well. And again, at the end of the graduate program, uh, if you're successful, you'll secure a permanent placement. And then finally, uh, we have the seasonal internship program in Germany. Um, so every three months, DWS take on an, inter, uh, an intake of interns across spring, summer and autumn. And again, these will be in different divisions based on kind of what you're most interested in. And at the end of those internships, again, there will be an opportunity to apply to the graduate pathway. And again, the, these internships are, of course, fully paid. 
So like I've mentioned, the, we've got the summer internship program in New York, we've got the graduate program in New York, then a graduate program in Frankfurt and the seasonal internship program in Frankfurt as well. In order to apply to the New York based programs, um, you need to be either studying at a US based institution or have the right to work in the United States. For the Frankfurt based programs, uh, you need to be fluent in German. And then for the internship programs, you need to be graduating between um, December 2023 and August 2024. So you would probably be in your second year now, going into your final year next year. For the graduate program, you would be currently in your final year and graduating between December 2022 and uh, next summer. So what does the application process look like? So some of you on the webinar today might already be in the application process or you might have already registered for the um, for, for one of these opportunities, which is fantastic, um, or you might be considering uh, applying. So the application process is quite standard uh, across the sector. So we firstly would ask you to complete a short online application form to give us a little bit more information about you and your motivations for joining DWS. Once you've passed that stage, um, you will then be asked to complete two online tests. So these are an online numerical test and online inductive reasoning test. Um, and then you would move on to the online video interview. So this is an interview that you can take in your own time. It's pre-recorded, so you, you sit down in your own time and um, answer a few questions, again, about your interest in joining DWS and why you're interested in the asset management sector um, and why you're applying to the roles. And then the final stage is an assessment centre, which will be um, held virtually. So um, wherever you are in the world, you, you can attend uh, the, the, the final stage, which is the assessment centre, which will typically be about half a day. So some top tips if you are interested in applying or you're already in the application process for DWS. So for the online application stage, always check that you meet the eligibility criteria for the programmes. If you're not sure, um, we would always recommend rather than just submit, submitting an application, kind of hoping for the best, always contact us first just to ask and we can clarify that for you. So the best email address to contact is dwsrecruitment at groupgti.com. What we always like to see in online applications is, is that you've tailored your answers to each of the questions. Sometimes we see candidates who have written the wrong company name or they have very clearly copied and pasted their applications from other applications that they've submitted. But we want to see that you're genuinely interested in DWS, that you've done a little bit of research into our business um, and that, that you're genuinely interested in the programmes and opportunities on offer. So um, there's plenty of information on our website you'll hear a lot of fantastic insights today from our panel um, so so always try and tailor your answers um, and make sure that you're that you're showing us that you are genuinely interested in in working for DWS and then we always love to hear about you and your personal experiences and your skills and um, you know what your interests are so you know, don't 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 feel like you have to pretend to be somebody else. Be you. Talk about your own your own background and and why that kind of links with why you're making an application to DWS. Once you pass the online application stage, then we go on to the online test stage. So um, the, the, this is quite a difficult one to to practice for, but you can go online and practice online tests. Um, online. So that link there, um, it, uh, the partner that we use is Test Partnership and you can go on that link and practice some numerical and uh, verbal reasoning and inductive reasoning tests um, just to make sure that you kind of know what to expect um, and you can hone your skills in, in that sense. And then the video interview, again, we're looking for you to really show that you've done your research into DWS and asset management and can show that you genuinely have the motivations to um, want, want to work for, for, the, for the business. Um, structuring your answers using the STAR approach. If you haven't heard of the STAR approach before, then it's something that you can very easily Google. It's, it's a way that you can structure your answers um, to, to really help your answers come across in the best way possible. Um, so STAR stands for situation, task, action, result, and ideally a reflection as well. 
Um, so, so it's worth kind of having a look at that and, and, and you can always prepare and book a mock interview with your career service if you're currently studying um, at university. Lots of career services will offer you the option to, to kind of get that support from your career service. Um, try and make sure that you lead with I rather than we. Um, so if you're being asked, for example, about your team working skills, um, even though, yes, you are working within a team, we want to see what skills you as an independent person can bring to, to us, to the business and to, to the roles um, that, that you're advertising for. So try to, to focus on, on what you did to um, support in a certain scenario rather than we. Um, and again, you can practice sometimes doing a pre-recorded video interview is a bit strange because you're not to, talking to a real person. It's not a live interview. So you can practice again on, on the shortlist.me website, which we've included a link for there, um, just to get a, a, get a bit used to, to the system and, and how it works. Um, and of course, you, as I said, you can always book mock interviews, practice interviews with your career service who can give you a little bit of support and, and guidance around that because we understand that it's a very nerve wracking process. Um, and all we want to see throughout the process is you, you being genuine. Um, so so we, we hope those tips help a, a little bit. And finally, the final slide that I have for you is obviously the applications are open now. So you can visit dws.groupgti.com to find all of those opportunities and to register and to apply. Um, if you are applying for one of the Frank First based schemes, so either the seasonal internship programme or the graduate programme, you will be invited to choose from your of your preference of the four divisions, which we're going to um, ask the panel to give us a little bit more insight into now. Um, so you would choose the, the division that you're most interested in out of those four. And then in the application form, you will be given an option to opt for a second preference of division. So if you, for example, were to choose client coverage and you maybe weren't successful in your first choice of, of coverage, you might then choose product or alternative investments as your as your second preference. So, so that, that option is in the in the form to allow you to apply for, for more than one of those opportunities. Obviously, we are here um, in the recruitment team to support you with any questions that you have uh, before, throughout and after the application process. So please don't hesitate to contact us on DWS recruitment at groupgti.com or you can call that number on the screen there and, and you'll probably get through to me and I can talk you through things. Um, so any way we can support your application, please do let us know. OK, and that um, kind of concludes my presentation. Um, so hopefully we'll I'll just actually get rid of that off the screen. There we go, and we're back, perfect. All right, so now we're going to move into the panel session. Um, so I'm going to start, I know we've already done a quick round of introductions, um, but I'm gonna go back to our panel and ask you maybe just to give a little bit more detail um, as to what you do on a day-to-day -day kind of basis at, at DWS. And like I mentioned in the presentation, I think it'd be really good to understand what each of the divisions does as well so that when people are applying they kind of have a bit of a, an understanding as to what they're applying for um, and I know each of the DWS trainees that we've got you all work in different divisions so if you can give a bit of an outline as to what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and what your division does I think that would be really helpful to get us started um, so I'll go the other way that I went last time um, Rocco can I start with you uh, of course Thank you. Uh, so, as I previously mentioned, I'm part of the traditional investment division of DWS. My first trainee rotation is actually in the EG department, where I'm working with the teams that do the proxy voting for the DWS uh, holdings and uh, the engagement, the ESG engagements with other companies. But in general, my my division, the investment division, is responsible for the active management and asset management. Uh, so we cover all traditional asset classes, uh, equity, fixed income, multi-asset, and have a bunch of different strategies, a bunch of different teams which focus on different sectors and regions. Uh, and yeah, we basically do all the active asset management of the company. 
except for the relative investments, but uh, Karina will probably tell you a lot about that. Okay. Okay, fantastic. And Rocco, can you tell us a little bit more about how you got to where you are now? Because you did want you took part of the internship program you mentioned in 2018. So how did you how did you kind of go from doing that internship to kind of and how how did that get you to where you are now? Um, yeah, so I did my internship in the coverage division actually. So yeah. another division. Um, but yeah, I just started I got that luckily I was quite happy about it. Uh, then for the next three months I just put in a lot of effort, talked to a lot of people, tried to get the company uh, to get to know the company very well. Uh, this was 2018 actually, so I'm still in the middle of my study. Uh, I stayed in contact with a lot of people, still talked to them. Then when I finally finished all of my study, uh, they said, hey, you should probably apply, apply to us. Uh, but then it really did help me to get an overview over the company. So it was good for me to actually see if I want to work here. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it helped to make an impression and uh, I guess people still remember me from my internship, which I helped a lot of my education. Okay, brilliant. So net, was net, networking was quite an important part of that, was it? Yeah. Can you talk about um, how, how, you, how you did that? Because networking, I think, can sometimes feel like a bit of a daunting, scary thing to, to do. So have you got any tips for, for people who maybe don't know how to, how to network um, and how to go about that? Uh, I have to be honest, I think technically networking is the correct term because I stayed in touch with the people. Um, but I'm not really a good networker. And most of the connections, I have the employees here, were really on a hobby basis. Or, for example, I played soccer with one of the teams, I played chess with another. So I really made not only the networking relationships, but I really stayed in contact with the people I worked here, not only for their position in the company. Uh, but for common interests. And so I guess if I, if I have to give a tip for networking is that don't make it so surface level networking, but really try to get to know the persons and those connections are much stronger than just, yeah, that's him and we talked about what we do for work and that's it. Uh, so I guess my tip, my tip for networking would be to not really <laughs> network, but rather talk to the people and get to know them yeah. really well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's really nice advice. Thank you. <laughs> um, I might come across to you now, Katerina, because um, you are in the alternative investments division. Is that right? And you also yeah, right. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, um, the alternative investment department of DWS is investing in real estate and in infrastructure. So we have a uh, different kind of um, funds uh, with different investors like pension funds um, yeah and we also do invest in all kind of asset classes so we have offices residential um, and retail for example or also many hotels um, and it's also that we are invested globally so we have real estates all over the world um, in Frankfurt, like in, and also in New York or in APEC in many countries. And uh, I would say that's uh, what I really like um, because it's, it's a rare chance to really have these um, insights into different real estate markets. Brilliant, thank you. And did you apply for that division or were you kind of told that you might best best fit within that division or kind of how how did that work and did you do the same um in your internship or was that more of a rotational experience yeah right um well i did my internship in the real estate department as well um, the real estate um is has three sectors so i was uh, first in the asset management sector uh, which is more on the technical side so we have a lot to do with the with the real estate so um, with the assets um, and the other two uh, huge sectors of uh, DWS real estate are transactions and fund management 
Um, so I had a really good insight into asset management um, during my internship and I really liked it. Um, and I felt that I want to also have the insight into the other uh, sectors of DWS real estate. So I decided to do the traineeship and applied for it. And uh, yeah, at the moment I'm in the real estate transactions team. So I'm doing, um, uh, the, yeah, I'm helping in the buy and sell process of real estate for our real estate funds. Brilliant. So you're still quite new and how are you, are you enjoying it so far? Yeah, I really enjoy it. Good. Good. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, and coming back. So Christoph, you work in client coverage. So it'd be great to hear about, about that and kind of how, how, how that works. And you didn't come through the internship route, did you? You kind of came to the graduate the trainee program separately. Um, so again, it would just be interesting to hear about your journey and, and how you got to where you are now. Um, so client coverage, as the name suggests, that's the division which is really closest to the client. So each and every day we actually try to contact clients, we work together with clients. And when I talk about clients, I think it's quite important um, that we most, even if we talk about wholesale, we mostly talk to professional investors. So all our clients, even if they're institutional or if they're wholesale, are professional investors. So we will always talk to people who are like-minded, I would say. And my basic days are, so in the morning you basically check the markets because you always have one hand on the markets. If a client calls you up and wants to discuss something new with you and, and you don't know about it, it's sounds quite stupid so you need to know something about markets and then usually talk, you talk to clients before lunch then you have lunch with your group and afterwards you you it depends you have, to, you have different meetings or you have client calls again and what is nice about those calls as well is that you basically cover every asset class there is so some clients call you up because they want some passive vehicle. So the ETF, for example, the others call you because they want to buy real estate with Katarina. So you got to know something about all of those products. And that's, that's what I like most, to be honest. And also we have a lot of nice events. So the, <laughs> the other guys are, they, they, they don't like us because we have so many events. No. Um, <laughs> Regarding my onboarding process, um, I worked in Vienna before and wanted to take the next step um, for my career. And yeah, I was sure I was gonna go into asset management. So of course, when you think about asset management, you know DWS, one of the biggest in Europe. And I thought the graduate program is a great opportunity to really uh, learn about the company, to learn about different sales approaches, divisions, and so on. And that's when I apply. Great, thank you. That's that's super. And would you? I think when maybe when people think of asset management, they think of probably more the traditional and the real estate investment side first. Obviously, you're doing coverage, um, and then there's the product division as well. So. I suppose what about your job you, you mentioned that you enjoy the events you enjoy kind of having that all seeing eye over over everything um what would you say to people who are who are looking to apply to dws and who are not quite sure about which division might be right for them um is you know is there a particular what, what, what do you enjoy the most about client coverage that you think could be a good you know a good thing to tell so those, those people yeah, so the, the first question I'd probably ask myself is how much do you want to engage with different people? How, how, how much do you want your time, your day to vary each day? So for me, each day is a totally different day. So I, I just do never have two days which are similar. And that's, I think, that's the great thing about client coverage. So each day is different. You talk to different people each day. Some people are very nice. Some people are complicated. That's also a nice situation because you gotta handle them. So it's, it's just nice because it's so different every day. And um, so I, I mean, I worked in portfolio management before. 
I think it's more project focused. I think you're more focused on yourself sometimes. And it, it might not be that different each and every day. So I, I think it's really about what kind of person you are and what you enjoy. Yeah, no, I think that's really helpful. Yeah, really useful insight. Thank you. Um, and Leone, I might come to you if that's okay, just to explain a little bit about the product division for anybody who might be interested in applying to that that department. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, to be honest, um, and this is not set in stone with the, with the different pillars and the different divisions, but um, as Christoph mentioned, so the client coverage is actually really the day-to-day -day activity with our clients. Um, it's the main contact for our clients when it comes also to, to their belongings and also to their um, discussion base. When we're looking to the traditional asset classes and investment division is the classic portfolio management. This is probably the division which is most renowned um, in the asset management sector. But um, the last missing piece is actually the product. And um, also, um, depending on the client um, needs, um, also the, the sp product specialist, which might be the one who can give the, the detailed questions and answers to the client needs in terms of the portfolios. So this is actually, I would say, the division which is closely in interaction, A, with the portfolio managers um, to see which uh, products and which um, different needs have to be in the portfolio on the client's behalf. And the other thing is that the product division is also having a close interaction, a close stakeholder management with the coverage division, because these guys going together with the client coverage um, managers to the specific uh, investors to talk them through the different products and also the special needs. Brilliant, got it. Thank you. That's really interesting, and I'm sure that will be really useful to everybody on on the call. So thank you. Yeah, and maybe also this is something which is which is um, maybe interesting for for a couple of people. So we we actually just announced in within the product division that we are also focusing more and more on digital assets. Uh, mm -hmm. So this will be part of the product strategy within DWS. So actually also all uh, digital assets, digital asset management is also part of the product division. Mm. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. That's really interesting. Okay, so moving on to the next question, which is about DWS and why each of you applied um, and, and chose to kind of put your own application in to pursue your career with, with DWS. Who would like to go first? I'll throw it out to you. Who's that? You can start. Go on, Rocco. Rocco, are you going to go? You go. Yeah. Um, so, so why did I apply to? Um, I think there's basically two components for me, which were quite important. There's the professional side, the private side. Um, I mean, I wanted to go into active management. That's where my passion lies. So, and I wanted to stay in Frankfurt. So there's only a limited number of options of companies that would, uh, would work. And WS is one of the global players, of course, uh, one of the main companies that you apply for. You wish that everything works out. Uh, but on the other side, from my internship, I really got great insight to the company culture and the private side, the people here. And I was very positively, not surprised, but I got a very positive impression of the people who work here, the environment in total. Uh, so yeah, for me, it was just a very, very easy decision to apply here and hope that everything works out because both those parts just fitted very well together. Okay, thank um, you. For me, I, I briefly mentioned that just because of like, DWS being one of the, the, the global players here, and also the one growing, um, that's why I focused on DWS in the first place. And then I came across the graduate program, which I just thought is a great opportunity. Yeah, and that's how I made the decision. Okay, thank you. Katarina? <laughs> yeah, same for me. Um, I, I liked uh, the opportunity to do this uh, great program at DWS. And uh, during my internship, I, um, I recognized that there are so many different tasks and um, there 
you are confronted with new challenges every day and um, I really enjoyed it and uh, yeah still that's the reason why I like working for DWS. Great. And can you maybe talk about um, a pro maybe a, a project or the most interesting part of your job so far or something that you've maybe done that you've gone home at the end of the day and thought, oh yeah, I, I, you know, I'm really proud of myself for that or, or that was a really interesting thing to work on. Could you give maybe a little example of, of something that comes to your mind? Um, what I'm working on is um, I'm on the sell side of a real estate here in Cologne and it's a huge office that we are selling at the moment and um, you have to talk to all kind of service providers, asset managers, you have to calculate in the model and um, it's the, the various um, yeah, you have to do so so many um, so many things in one day. So um, it's very yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's it's so interesting that you have to um, communicate with all the different um, persons, and that's really interesting on the job in the transactions team. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Um, and yeah, Christoph and, and Rocco, what would you say so far has been the most interesting or enjoyable, memorable moment at DWS? So what I really like is my boss actually loves to put me in shoes that are bigger than my size. And I, I have quite big feet, I, I must say. <laughs> um, and that's what I what I really enjoy. So, for example, in two weeks now, I, I have to, or I'm allowed to, plan a whole event on my own, and uh, things like that, where he, he actually actually throws stuff at me, and, and of course, he also helps me if I come back and ask. But I I like to 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 learn new stuff by really just starting to work on it, you know. So that's that's I, I think the thing I really enjoy most that I really get stuff done and my boss always give me, gives me nice work. Great. So it sounds challenging, but a challenge that you kind of feel that you're thriving with. Yeah, yeah. but I enjoy it. That's the, that's the thing. Great. Thank you. And, and Rocco, how about you? Um, yeah, I think I have to agree with Christoph um, because it's really great that you, even as a graduate, directly get a lot of responsibilities in the company um, and you can directly see the impact that you make. Um, for me currently in the ESG team, it's quite interesting to see how DWS handles the whole ESG topic, um, how serious we take active ownership and engagement with companies um, to try to keep this in line. Um, but I, I have to admit the most interesting part or more, most exciting part for me as a new joiner in this company is to really get to know the company because there's a, a million different departments DWS really present in basically every area you can imagine in the asset management industry. Um, so you learn something new every day. And you get to know people who do lots of different stuff every day. Um, I think that's quite interesting for, for the starting points of the, of the career. Fantastic. And how, how do you get to know everybody in the organization because it's so huge and you're maybe working across with diff different people from different countries as well. Um, how, how, how kind of practically are you able to do that? And there's obviously a network of you with the graduates as well. So do you all kind of communicate and what's, what's the culture like in that respect? We have, we have a coffee culture. So what the really nice thing about being an intern or also a graduate is you can basically go up to anyone and ask them for a coffee and it's never a stupid question because they know you're a graduate or, a, or an intern and they basically have to say yes. So that's the good thing. You just go up to a person and ask him and sometimes maybe they even come up to you and ask you, so do you have 30 minutes for a coffee? And that's the good thing. And we also do have the new Lakers launch. So uh, we meet <laughs> us <laughs> uh, once once a month and um, the whole company comes together and it's, uh, yeah, it's really fun. 
Fantastic. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So, yes, yeah, so <laughs> Dave Dubois has a big partnership with the Lakers, right? Yeah, right. Um, uh, the Lakers Lounge is like a coffee kitchen in the fifth floor at uh, DWS office in Frankfurt. And uh, we have some uh, tricots of the players there. And um, it's just the name and uh, the, the meeting point for these events uh, once a month. And uh, there was one time a player of the Lakers actually here in Frankfurt and has given us uh, signings and tricots. Oh, wow. That's very cool. That's the most the most important thing about the launch is that it usually or that it has a refrigerator with beer in it and it's closed basically <laughs> every day but on the first thursday of the month at 5 p.m it gets open <laughs> then, then we meet <laughs> that's the most important thing <laughs> yeah. fantastic thank you um and leonie i might Maybe, you um, ask Oh, yeah, go on. Yeah, okay. just to add yeah. on this, um, so if you're part of the graduate program, you also get yeah. assigned a mentor and a buddy, which are a junior and a senior person in the company, which are probably already well connected. So if you have any questions for specific departments, they are really very helpful. And I think generally the culture in this company is that if you just go to someone and ask them, hey, can you show me what you are doing? People love to share the job and they will always say, hey, Maybe I don't have time now, but in two days, come for one or two hours, and we will go through everything I have on my, my desk. Uh, so yeah, you have to just be proactive. Yeah. And, yeah. Fantastic. But the, I mean, it sounds like the opportunities are there, and everyone's really collaborative and really open to supporting you and, and helping you learn and, and get, giving their time to you, which is it's, that's re really important. That's, that's, that's great. Yeah, maybe just one thing to add, and I think after two years of pandemic and actually people working on and off in the office and actually hybrid working model, I think everyone is actually enjoying to coming back to the office and actually having in-person meetings again. Um, I think still we will have a hybrid model for DWS globally. Um, also, and I think the, the pandemic is not over yet, but actually we will have a hybrid model with um, a couple of days working in the office and also flexibility working from home if it's needed. But I think um, also as a tip for, for especially for, for graduates and for interns, I think the network opportunities in the office is obviously the best. Um, people are super open to, to meet up, having coffees or lunches as, as Christoph, Rocco and Katarina just mentioned. And also during the programs, I think the most important thing also if you if you're part of one division is actually also the degrad program um, in Frankfurt where it's a bit more divided into divisions give you an opportunity also to have rotations with other divisions and meeting the other teams uh, which is also very very important um, for your later career for example for Christoph he will be obviously um, more on the client uh, coverage side, but um, having a network within the product um, division or having a product, having a network within the portfolio management team is is definitely super important for for the success in his career afterwards. So this is um, this is definitely something I wanted to mention, and also for the US guys, uh, where the program is more kind of a generalist program, and actually rotations will be across the different divisions. Um, I think network is also key. Um, we're also working closely with the with the offices in Chicago and Boston, so also there is a there's a close interaction um, with the, with these teams. Yeah. Thank you. It's really helpful. I'm going to ask one last question and then we're going to go to some questions from the uh, participants if that's okay so my final question to all of you is what tips would you have for people who are looking to either apply to the dws internship program or the graduate program kind of thinking back to where you were and um, thinking about putting together an application for dws um do you have one or two tips that you could could share with people that, that might help them with that uh katarina start with you uh yeah sure um i would say firsthand uh, just be yourself because uh you want to join dws and you you need to have uh yeah, you 
will join a great company and uh, you have to show that you fit to the company, that you um, know what you want to do, to do um, as at DWS. And um, I would say that doing an internship before the graduate program helps you um, because then you have the insights and you also know the interviewer in the um, in the application process, but it's not mandatory to do this internship beforehand. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Christoph, to you. Um, I think it's also important to be yourself, so especially for the the, the whole process. Basically, try to be try to really talk what. What you love talk about what you love why you love the industry why you really want to do this and why you should maybe do it and not someone else and i think that's basically the the, the, the most important thing be yourself prepare well so if you really have the chance to to have a face-to-face -face meeting or just an interview know something about the about EWS, know something about the company, know what assets we have, where we're focused on. That's, I, I think that's that's important that you you come prepared, and that's what I would suggest. Yeah, great advice. And Rocco, any last <laughs> advice from you on that bit? Um, yeah, I think Katharina and me, we are basically very lucky to, to have been admitted, and Leonie probably knows best what uh, the best way to buy it. Uh, but I can tell something about my impression with the application process is in our interview rounds, we had to do a presentation about ourselves. And in the beginning, I thought, okay, they're probably more focused on the financial knowledge. And I mean, you have to know your P's and Q's and this is like a secondary thing. Uh, but I really put some effort into this presentation and till this day, I meet people, my old interviewers who were like, yeah, presentation is really good and help you stand out from the others. Uh, so I guess don't underestimate the effect of, of social factors in your application. Of course, you have to have your knowledge for the department you are applying to. I mean, that's given. Um, but at the end of the day, the people who select you will work with you every day. And I think, Leonie, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it helps greatly if they get a good, interesting impression about your character about yourself no no absolutely i couldn't agree more and uh definitely i would say it's it's, it's about the people and uh, one of the sentences which um, was always used at dws is actually win as a team and i think this is a really true sentence uh which belongs to dws um it's a team structure we're definitely working as a global team together and um yeah we 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 love to to have people want to engage in the dws family okay Thank you. Okay, I'm going to move on to some questions that we've been asked um, from participants, if that's okay. So um, we've got Killian. So Killian has asked, what was the biggest challenge you have had to face during your experience at DWS? Who would like to take that one first? I mean, I think what is actually a big challenge, I think for basically every new joiner, is that it's just a big company and it's, it's many, many people. So you come here and everyone talks about something which you basically don't understand because they use those three letters for basically everything. And then they, they use all the names of the different people and you only know faces. So it, it's kind of overwhelming in the, let's say first one or two months. And you shouldn't be overwhelmed by that. I think it's normal. And uh, from time to time, you, you should just ask questions. So really just go up to the people and say, okay, what is ABC? What is BDC? Um, they will tell you anyway. And after some time, you, you'll get to know the things. So don't be overwhelmed by such things and really try to work with your group. Thank you. Good advice. Rocco or Katarina, do you have anything to add? Or Leone? I mean, yeah, you, you've worked at DWS for a number of years. Katarina, you go first. Um, yeah, maybe I think um, Christoph said a lot of right things for me. It was, it, 
it's not a big challenge you have to overcome, but you have to be able to deal with getting thrown into cold water, I think. Um, I remember in my internship, my, my boss was on holiday in the first week, and he just gave me a task, and he was like, yeah, try to finish it in a week, and I had no prior knowledge, nothing, and um, I mean, it's quite easy in such a situation to just block and try to do different things, and I try to focus and, and get myself through it. And if you overcome stuff like this, it's always positive in the end. Yeah, I think I don't have anything to add. Um, maybe <laughs> the first uh, lunch date I wanted to schedule, I was a little bit scared and uh, didn't know what to write. But uh, after the first lunch date, it's easy to just write the senior managers. Uh, they always reply and are happy to respond. Thank you. Um, Another question is, actually, it's probably one for me, when are assessment centres scheduled for and what do they involve? Um, so the assessment centres are scheduled throughout November and into January. Um, and we will be, for anybody who has um, applied and who has taken part in the video interview stage, we'll be letting you know about the outcome of those very, very soon, say in the next couple of weeks. Um, so, so look out for an email from us um, very soon about that. Uh, what do they involve? We can probably we can probably say a little bit about what they involve, but obviously we can't share too much about that. Um, you don't need to do any preparation in advance of the assessment centre. It will all be there for you in a day. The assessment centres are typically about half a day long um, and based on kind of wh wh where you were based, whether it's the Frankfurt programmes or the uh, New York programmes, we'll obviously make sure that they fit to your time zones based on where you are in the world. Um, and they will involve a group activity, an individual activity and an interview um, and then some other activity that, that, that won't be assessed. Um, but as I say, that, that it won't be any longer than a, than a half a day and the assessment centre will be fully virtual. Um, so you won't have to travel anywhere physically to attend that. So I hope that answers that question. Um, a few people have asked what are the right to work criteria for US and Germany. Um, so for the German programs, you don't need, well, you, as long as you are studying within the right months of the program that you're applying to and you speak fluent German, that is the eligible eligibility criteria for Germany. Leonie, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and then for the United States, you either need to be currently based in a US institution based physically in the United States, or you need to have the right to work in the United States. Um, so, so that would be you know, US citizenship, or if you have the right to work in, in another way, for example, if you're um, I think some Canadian citizens, for example, have the right to work. If you're not sure about your right to work status and whether you're eligible for the programmes, please just email us um, and we will we will contact you about that just before you put together an application. It's worth just checking with us and we'll, um, and, and, and we'll clarify that for you. Uh, Presley has asked, what skills are you looking for in the traditional investment division? Um, I'm just wondering who would be best. To, to, be, to be honest, the, the, the skills that we are asking you to demonstrate throughout the uh, assessments pro process for both the internship programmes and the graduate programmes are the same. Um, so so we, we, we assess the same competencies and skills throughout the process. Um, Leonie, I'm just thinking, are there any specific skills that you would be looking for for candidates? who you were to place in the traditional investments division, aside from the ones that we kind of tell people about up front? Yeah, yeah, not really. I think, to be honest, you definitely need a sweet, a sweet spot for numbers that would be helpful um, in terms for probably for every job in the financial market. Um, also having an interest in the macroeconomics, in the, um, in the overall markets, this is definitely a really um, valid point for, for all the divisions uh, within an asset management. I think, um, Rocco, maybe, is there anything which uh, you're using day by day, um, which is a skill you, you most <laughs> depending on? Um, yeah, I guess everybody in the financial industry can agree that good knowledge and access is essential. Uh, I'm not sure if this is actually an interview criteria, 
Uh, I guess for the interviews, I can just say you probably will talk to investment professionals who are for 20, 30, 40 years in the industry. Um, and they will ask you some questions. Um, mostly, they're, from my experience, they're not super into depth, uh, but you should somehow be able to handle those. And yeah, no, no expo. Expo is, is a staple. <laughs> Um, what we would, would say is whenever you're thinking about putting together an application, always check the person specification in the job description. Um, so I've, I've got the job description open at the moment. And in terms of skills and what we assess throughout the, 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 the application process, it's very fair. We're, we're not asking to, for you to have any prior experience. We're not asking you to come from a specific degree background. I think that was one of the additional questions on, on the chat. Um, numerical skills, obviously, yeah, you're, you're going to be working in investment bank, uh, asset management, so, so that, that that's needed. But essentially, what do you are looking for are it drive, commitment, motivation, um, a team player, and being able to collaborate with with colleagues, um, curiosity, um, and just yeah, some, someone with that keen keen interest in asset management and financial services. Um, so, as long as you can show that throughout the application process at each, at each of the stages, then you've got a very good chance of kind of getting through to that to that final stage, to that assessment centre stage. Okay, and we've got maybe three more minutes, so I'm going to see what else I can squeeze in. Um, a few people asking when they will hear the outcome from the video interview. I think I've covered that. They'll be you'll be re receiving an uh, an update as to the outcome of your video interview. If you've already taken part in that very soon. The um, the closing deadline for applications isn't until the end of um, October for some of the programs. Um, so we'll be kind of waiting until we've received an application from everybody um, before moving forward. But we will try and give you an update um, on, on the outcome in the next couple of weeks. Um, Maximilian asks, how many people are there each year in the graduate program? So how many um, is there in your group at the moment, you, you guys, you, you graduate trainees in Frankfurt? It's five in coverage, four in business, right? Yes. And, and two uh, in real estate. Product. Product. So 13 people. In yeah, so in general, it was... Yeah, exactly. So in general, we, we were talking around 15 people as an intake for Germany and then another um, seven people next year for New York. Perfect. Thank you. There you go. I think that answers your question. Um, and British asks, do you primarily only hire former interns for the graduate programs, especially the investment divisions? No. no. I can definitely say no. I think it's definitely an advantage to have an internship because you you know the you know the company and you know the people you're working with, so this um, gives you definitely also the um, opportunity to take your choice on a more on a, on, a, on a better basis. But actually, um, as Christoph is obviously also part of our graduate class, uh, we would definitely not uh, not miss any talent in the market. Um, just focusing on the interns. Okay, I think that is pretty much all of our questions um, and we're coming swiftly towards the end of the session. Um, so, you know, I hope that's been helpful to everybody who's attended. Um, I've, I've certainly found it very, very interesting. So, so thank you panel for, for taking part. We really appreciate it. Um, we will be sending out a recording of this session and a link to where all of the opportunities are currently advertised straight after this session. If you have any questions about the roles or the opportunities um, or the application process, um, then please do not hesitate to contact us. Um, I think Ollie will put the details of how you can contact us in the chat and also the link to where you can apply for the opportunities. Um, and yeah, we really, really hope that you um, decide to apply for DWS. If you already have submitted an application, then that's fantastic. Um, panel, is there anything you would like to say as a as the finisher? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the last bit, but bit to you. Um, any any words of advice or, or wisdom or anything um, you would like to to add as your final comment? 
Words of wisdom. <laughs> um, I, I would really try to, to, to take the chance here and really um, go for an application at DWS. I think it's a great working space. You really have plenty of opportunity. I wouldn't actually focus too much on, on, on the divisions itself as well. I think whenever you have interest in financial markets and you, you thrive for your career, there is some career path for you at DWS. I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. I guess, uh, from my side, best of luck to all the applicants. Uh, and I think if you manage to get in here, it's a great company with a great culture. And uh, I think you make no mistake with, with DWS. Yeah, also from my side, good luck. And hopefully we will see us soon again. Yeah, finally, um, you obviously the next generation of DWS. So we're looking forward to meet you in the application process and uh, yeah, perform our future with the with class of 23. Yeah, exciting. Thank you. Thank you so much, panel. I can see loads and loads of thank you comments in the chat. So lots of um, thanks and gratitude and appreciation there from everybody who's attended. Um, so we will leave that there. Thank you again, um, everybody for attending. And um, yeah, hope, hope to speak to you all soon. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.